Well, Kamala Harris is seeking black men, and her husband, Doug, is not even a little bit jealous. And in this episode as well, Kamala Harris has a come-to-Jesus meeting, and only one of them shows up. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Uh, gentlemen, we really should have done two separate episodes on this, but we're going to try to keep it crisp, because after all, I'm not sure most of our watchers want to uh, listen to us jabber on about Kamala Harris for very long. Uh, but let's let's start out with Steve. Steve uh, Harris has recently released her uh, program and advertising push to try to make up for what they perceive as a loss of support among black men. Now they perceive it that way, probably because some uh, some somewhat snarky comments that former President Barack Obama made recently, oh, yeah. where he essentially was beating up on black men for not wanting to support Kamala because she's a woman. So this is a black Democrat politician telling black registered Democrat voters that they are sexists and therefore they will keep the Democratic Party from moving ahead. In any case, uh, Kamala Harris's uh, so-called program uh, includes a proposal to make some $1,020,000 uh, small business loans through the SBA to black entrepreneurs. Um, she also said she's going to amp up research in uh, for, uh, to find a cure for sickle cell and anemia, which disproportionately affects black people, as well as some other diseases that black, uh, especially black men, are more susceptible to. And this is the most interesting one, I think, Steve. Um, she's also going to legalize marijuana. Um, Steve, I tried, oh, how I tried, to see this proposal as not just another big brother thing saying, oh, poor black man, you're incapable of working for yourself. You're incapable of lifting yourself up. And so we are going to reach down now and help you up. And Steve, do you think it is made any better by the fact that this is a woman telling black men that they're incapable without her? Wait, which woman are you talking about? Kamala or Barack? Ka <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> Go, oh, okay. No, you're, you're not going to answer me. I'll just ha I'll, I'll have to wing it. Um, oh God, that that Obama statement, man. It, and he did that that sleazy, slimy, sneaky thing he always does. He he couches it in in in, in terms of what 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 he didn't actually come out and say, hey hey brothers. And he did say brothers, by the way. It's did just, he really? It's so authentic when when Barack yeah. gets street. Um, he, he told his brothers that he didn't actually say they were sexist. He just said, you probably come up with some other reasons in your mind for not voting for her. Uh, just, I just, God, I would love to be able to miss that guy, but he won't go away. Every four years, he just comes back. Every two years, he comes back. He just, anyway, um, okay, here's the thing. Sickle cell anemia, yeah, please, let's find a cure for that. There's a, there, there is a role for government in pure research, particularly medical research like that. Let's, let's find a cure. You know, uh, George W. Bush, is, as much as pretty much everybody is so done with that guy here in this country, is still revered in Africa, especially East Africa, for all the work he had Washington do to help eradicate AIDS from yeah. that continent. Um, and, it was, and it was good work to do. If I got to be taxed, and apparently I do, that's the kind of work I don't mind seeing my tax dollars do. So, okay, sickle cell anemia, let's, let's wipe that out. I would love to see that. But if she really wants to help small business, and I don't care what color small business, black, white, Asian, brown, whatever, this will, this will lift all boats. Don't give us $50,000, $150,000, even $2 million tax credits. Small business doesn't need cash nearly as much as it needs opportunity. And big government, the kind of big government that Kamala Harris is all about, has always been about, squashes opportunities in layer and layer and layer after layer of red tape. You yeah. can't... All big government does is get into bed with big business, and Republicans are guilty of this too, not as guilty, but they get into bed together and they squash out opportunities for small business. Um, it's, it's a miracle that there's any innovation in this country considering how much red tape is in the way. If Kamala Harris were to say, you know, uh, instead, of, instead of, you know, a big fake check for $50,000, if she had a big pair of scissors and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start cutting the red tape mm. with these scissors as soon as I'm in office— I might actually think about voting for her. She's not going to do it, though. She's she's big government. 
Trump gave us four years of deregulation. That was great. I want more of that. That will help black small business. You better believe it. In fact, uh, black small business flourished under Trump in ways that it hadn't. But what it comes down to on, on Harris's side, <coughs> pardon me, I'm getting over a cold here. What it comes down to on Harris's side is panic. I saw a headline this morning. I didn't have a chance to dig into the story because I was, I was prepping for Right Angle. Is that Harris is projected to get a smaller share of the black vote than any Democrat president, uh, presidential candidate since 1960. Since 1960. That's the last election since before Johnson's Civil Rights Act. So this, this is a big deal. There is panic on her side, which means Harris just can't get enough of that BBV. That's a big black vote. <laughs> By the way, the uh, $20,000 SBA loans that she is promising are uh, non, what do they call that? They're forgivable. Mm. So basically, mm-hmm. it is a giveaway, it's, not really It's another bribe. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, cut the Bill, tape. I'm going to take another event in the life of this uh, unique and amazing woman. I saw a headline uh, where it said Kamala Harris is a phenomenal woman of God. And I thought, Mm. I wonder what sort of phenomenon she executed uh, in order to get that title. She spoke at a mega church called the Koinonia Christian Center uh, down south somewhere. Uh, From the sounds of it, it's probably a largely African-American congregation. And she spoke for about 10 minutes. I actually uh, watched the whole thing. And she spoke about a a verse in Galatians chapter 6, which is a book in the New Testament uh, that said, and let us not grow weary in doing good. Um, And what, what I marveled at was... Bill, I don't, I don't know how you do this. She speaks in a mega church. A bunch of professing Christians are sitting before her. She's introduced by a pastor who is, one would assume, also a professing Christian. She gets up in front of all these people and talks for 10 minutes out of a, a, a very brief chapter in the Bible, about, I think it's 16 or 19 verses in this chapter, in which the Lord Jesus Christ is mentioned at least four times in this chapter. She manages to go through 10 minutes never mentioning Lord Jesus or Christ. There are a couple of oblique references to God and the revelation that I had not previously heard, maybe you guys have heard about this, that she grew up in church and she remembers singing in the children's choir and she remembers things that her pastor has said and uh, specifically uh, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Uh, but Bill, what, what really struck me about it is I would think that a politician or anybody standing up in front of a Christian congregation would feel free to mention Jesus, especially if she's professing to be a follower. Why is it that she didn't or can't do that in front of a Christian congregation? Well, first of all, because the speech wasn't for the Christian congregation. The speech was for everybody outside of the Christian congregation. Hmm. She made... She may claim to be a child of uh, God, but if she's a child of God, she's sure doing her level best to make sure that there are as few new children of God uh, brought into the world as possible. That that seems to be her main mission in life. Uh, this speech wasn't for the people in the church. This look, this, I, I talked about this on that first of those "How to Beat Harris" things, where you say you got to get her out of the gray. She she, the politics of identity are such that. There are certain, um, well, if you pardon the expression, sacred cows that each individual one of these groups have that cannot be touched. If you touch them, you lose that vote. So she needs to she needs to reclaim the vote of religious people and 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 to some degree black men and and, and other people. So she's going to speak at a church in order to say things that will gain her some votes among the people who are religious. Oh look, she's in church and she's quoting the Bible. But she can't say Jesus, she can't say Christ, and she can't say Lord, because if she does, she will lose the atheists that make up the enormous center of, of, her, of her radical left party. These people are not only not Christian, they are virulently anti-Christian. She can't come out and say Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, or any of those things. If, they, if she does that, she's going to be just as much of, of a threat to our democracy by bringing in this theocracy as, as Donald Trump, for God's also sake. Also, she'll get struck so, by lightning. 
<laughs> well, her, 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 her skin will certainly catch fire. There's no question about that. Um, so so th th this, is, this is the most cynical of cynical ploys. It's, a, it, it's no different, Scott, than what you just asked Steve. We're gonna we're gonna help black men up. We're gonna make we're gonna make um, these loans available. They're not even have to. You, you don't even have to repay them. We'll pay you twenty thousand dollars per person to vote for me, basically. And and this connects to my episode this week because it is a sign of of, of extreme desperation. The very fact that she's in a church is is more damaging to her political base. It's a it's it's a dumb move, Scott. It's not going to convince any Christians that this is suddenly a woman of God. Everybody knows that she's a convinced, utter atheist. She's a Marxist. She, she's a, a secularist who, who believes in the power of the state as the almighty force of the universe. She thinks she might be shoring up some degree of vote among people who are religious voters, but nobody's going to buy that. On the other hand, her appearing in church is going to, is going to actually diminish enthusiasm among the rapidly diminishing group of people who are supporting, who are coming from, the anti, not just the unreligious left, the anti-religious left. She's flailing is what she's doing. And, and she's not particularly impressive when she's in her absolute comfort zone. And the further out of that zone that she's about to go, the worse she gets. As we record this, it looks like, I think it's tomorrow, she's going to do an interview with uh, Brett Baer. By the time this airs, that interview will probably already happen. That's not the kind of risk you would take if you feel like you are comfortably ahead in the polls. This is, uh, you know, any, anybody who's familiar at all with the scripture is probably had the same kind of reaction that I did. Um, and at first, you just kind of like, how did she get through that? Even, you know, 10 minutes without mentioning the Jesus whose name is explicitly mentioned multiple times in the chapter she was in. Um, the, the other problem with this is that basically... She has turned uh, scripture into humanism. So she basically says, Do not go, uh, don't grow weary in doing good. It's a campaign rally. She's basically saying, look, it's, I know it's getting down to the wire here, and you guys have been working for this party for all this time, but don't grow weary in doing good. Every example she gave, including some guy who rescued somebody who was drowning in the floods after Hurricane Helene, um, is designed not to point the focus as we do in church, toward the Lord, but to point the focus at humans and what they can do and their performance. And that's how we get measured. Now, you might say, well, if, if she's a politician, she's giving a speech, that's okay. And I'm okay with that too, if she wants to give a speech somewhere out in some public place. But the fact that the church invited her in and let, them, let her basically corrupt that opportunity, that gathering, by basically pitching a secular humanist political message of how we need to get her elected, just makes me sick to the stomach. Um, it's you know, People have been very critical of Donald Trump in the past when he spoke at Liberty University um, at a convocation many years ago now, but um, and he said, uh, he was quoting scripture and he said two Corinthians and everybody mocked him and laughed into their hands. And uh, to a certain extent, I thought it sounded weird too, until later I heard a Scottish Christian refer to second Corinthians as two Corinthians. And I was like, oh, well, maybe that's how some people refer to that. And maybe the preacher he grew up listening to or heard said it that way. That's a quibble. This is fundamental. And Kamala Harris appearing in the church was basically saying not only are humans gods unto themselves, and she quoted the prophet Isaiah and made it seem like that passage, which was about the king of the universe, was about human beings providing refuge to other human beings. If you want to see what's wrong with this country, it's not just in politics. It's in the fact that we've turned our eyes away from the living God and to human beings, and then we're startled when they constantly disappoint us. Maybe it would be more fruitful to read that passage for yourself in Galatians 6. Maybe you'll get more out of it than you could by hearing some craven politician weeks before the election uh, uh, trying to pretend that she's preaching on the text. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.